Let's talk about Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. We're going to begin with Cartesian. Uh, this is the easiest one, I think, to understand conceptually out of all of them. Uh, it's kind of what we're all used to. Uh, we have our EX direction, EY direction, and our EZ direction. This makes our basis. And to define this vector A, uh, this vector A that points from the, the origin to point P, uh, we travel some distance. Uh, in this case, our green A along the EX direction. And then we travel a distance of blue B in the EY direction. And then finally, we go some distance, you know, this pink C, in the EZ direction. And if we follow that path that uh, we just described, we will end up at point P. And the vector written out uh, would look like this. You know, we went green in the EX, uh, blue B in the EY, and then pink C in the EZ direction. And that got us from the origin to point P. These are also called rectangular coordinates, uh, because I, I guess if you draw a rectangle and you, you lay it on top, it, you kind of move along the edges of the rectangle, and um, you're moving in a rectangular pattern, I guess, to get to, to, get to uh, define our vector. Uh, so we're going to define this same vector A, but now we're going to do uh, cylindrical coordinates. Now we're going to talk about cylindrical coordinates. So what are the two properties we need to define a cylinder itself? Well, a cylinder has some radius r and some height. Uh, in this case, I called it z, some height z. So that defines our cylinder. And you can see our vector a is pointing to this point p, which lies on the top edge of our cylinder. So with our cylinder defined already with r and z, you know, we, we still need to define where on this top edge point P is. And the way we do that is with this angle theta, right? So if, if theta was equal to zero, point P would be right here. You know, it will be uh, right in line with EX. If uh, theta was a little bit less than what we have drawn here, you know, it would be like right here. And theta would be defined like that. And then this would be theta, right? So theta tells you where on the top edge of our cylinder we are. Uh, we have our cylindrical basis uh, written down here, and this has three unit vectors associated with it. We have ER, which is our radial direction, our radial direction. We have E theta, which is called our azimuthal direction, E sub theta. And then E sub Z, I don't really know what the name for it is. I just call it the Z direction. E sub Z is the Z direction. And let's talk about how these are defined. So ER points from the origin, uh, the center of our cylinder, out to this point Q, right? If point P was here, say, point Q would be right here. And then uh, ER would be pointing in this direction. This would be ER. Say it was uh, pointing over here. Last example. <laughs> Q would be right here, and then O would be pointing towards point Q like that, and that would be ER. Um, o, o, P, Q, you can see this forms a plane right here, and E theta is perpendicular to this plane formed by O, P, Q. And E, Z is pointing in that third dimension, and that tells you, you know, once I go from O to Q, how high up do I need to go now? Well, you go up uh, distance of z. And I have it drawn. I have a couple more drawings down here. I'll, I'll kind of talk about to help you visualize this cylindrical uh, coordinate system. So I, I picture it's kind of like a cake. Our, our cylinder is kind of like a cake. And then I cut into the cake with this brown plane, this brown plane right here. This is that plane I was talking about formed by OPQ. ER points uh, from O to Q in this direction. E theta is perpendicular to our brown plane. And then EZ points in that third dimension straight up. And uh, this over here is the exact same thing I drew on the left. I just left out the rest of the cake <laughs> or the cylinder. Um, just to show that like this is our sweep angle theta, and this is how much of the cylinder we've, we've, 
quote unquote like created from the sweep. Um, so what do I have written here? Math classes, I always was throwing a bunch of equations at me for how to convert between Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. We don't need to worry about memorizing anything. I, I try my best to memorize the least uh, that I can. <laughs> I think it's easier that way. Um, we're just going to use our DCMs, and our DCMs will uh, take care of these, these conversions between these different bases. So how would we go from our green basis? How would we go from this green basis, this EX, EY, EZ, or like our Cartesian, what we started out as, I guess, or uh, in tr our inertial frame, you could think of it as, uh, to our pink basis. Well, all we do is a three rotation by theta, right? We do a three rotation by theta, and if we rotate this green basis by theta about the third axis, which is EZ, we will end up aligned with our cylindrical basis. So... This is our fundamental three rotation, bi angle theta. Uh, we did a whole video on that. Uh, if you didn't see it, go watch it. Uh, and now that we have that, how would we actually define our vector A in our cylindrical basis? What do we do? Well, we go a distance of R in the ER direction, and that'll get us to point Q. And then we go from Q to P by traveling Z in the EZ direction. And that's it. Right, so R, E, R, like we just said, plus Z, E, Z, that is our vector A. That's our vector A defined in cylindrical coordinates. We can substitute in for our pink cylindrical basis uh, with our, uh, you know, our transformation we just defined up here. So E sub R is equal to cosine theta, E, X, plus sine theta, E, Y, plus zero, E, Z. So we can plug that in here. This is ER, written in terms of our green basis. And then EZ, pink EZ, is the same as green EZ, right? Zero, zero, one. EZ is equal to EZ. So after subbing that in and distributing our um, R, <laughs> we'll end up with this right here. And we can see if we go over to Wikipedia, what do they say here? Then the z-coordinate is the same in both systems. Yep, yep, z-coordinate is the same in both systems. Uh, and the correspondence between cylindrical and Cartesian uh, is written as follows, is written as this. So the x component is equal to this rho cosine phi. And just uh, for our reference, Wikipedia, their rho is our r, and Wikipedia's phi is our theta. They just use different notation, but we're doing the same thing. So the x component is rho cosine phi, and we have r cosine theta for our x component. y is rho sine uh, phi. You see we have r sine theta in the y direction. And then finally, z is equal to z. Well, that's what we have, z is equal to z. So there we go. We did the, the equation, the, the conversion equation or whatever, uh, just by using our DCMs. Okay, let's go on to a spherical. So spherical, we how would we define a point on a sphere? Well, first we have to define the radius of the sphere. So this sphere has some radius r, which we've defined right here. And we define a point on the sphere with two angles. This angle theta, which is uh, the azimuthal angle, and then this angle uh, phi, which is called the colatitude angle. And that's measured off of our EZ direction. So to define point P, if we have a radius R defined and these two angles, then we've defined a point on our circle, point P. And uh, this is our basis here. Uh, this is called our spherical, spherical basis, I guess. Uh, and again, U sub R is our radial direction. U sub uh, phi this is a new one. This is our co-latitude direction. And then finally, u sub theta, that's the same as e sub theta uh, in our cylindrical basis. That's the azimuthal direction. It, they're pointing in the same exact direction. Uh, so I have, I have it written out again down here. This is just without the sphere, so we can kind of get a little better idea. You can see u sub r points from O to P. That's the u sub r direction. 
U sub theta points in the same direction as E sub theta. It's normal to this plane formed by OPQ. And then U sub phi is equal to U sub theta crossed with U sub R. U sub theta crossed with U sub R is U sub phi. I have it drawn over here. And this is if we had our eyeball right here and we were looking directly into this plane, directly into that OPQ plane. And you can see E sub R in the cylindrical basis points directly to the right, like we talked about. E sub Z points straight up and E sub theta is uh, into the page. U sub theta is the same as E sub theta points into the page. U sub R points from O to P, that's that direction. And then u sub phi is u theta crossed with u r. And you can see that u sub phi, this co-latitude direction, it's, it's normal to this, this plane that's being swept by angle phi, this co-latitude angle. It's, it's normal to that, uh, that plane that's being swept. It's kind of one way you can think about it. Same with uh, e sub theta. So let's see, how would we go from our green basis, E sub X, E sub Y, E sub Z, how would we go from that to our spherical basis? Okay, well, we're going to have to do a couple of rotations, right? First, uh, we're going to rotate the green basis to align with our pink basis. And the way we did that, we already said, we rotated by angle theta about EZ. So that's our first rotation, uh, three rotation by theta. And then we're going to look at this over here to do our final couple rotations. We want to align E sub R with U sub R. We want to align E sub R with U sub R. How do we do that? We do a negative 2 rotation by this angle right here. And this angle right here is 90 minus phi, right? Because this angle here, that's 90 degrees, this angle is phi. So this angle here is 90 minus phi. So we do a negative 2 rotation by 90 minus phi. And this aligns ER with UR. And then EZ is pointing in this direction. And E theta is into the page. Now keep in mind, we're not trying to align E theta with U theta. That's not right. In our cylindrical basis, E sub R is our 1 direction. E sub theta is our 2 direction. E sub Z is our three direction. In our spherical basis, u sub r is our one direction, u sub phi is our two direction, and then u sub theta is our three direction, right? So we want to align the one, two, three basis with each other, right? So we want u sub r aligned with e sub r. We want u sub phi, our two direction, aligned with e sub theta. And then we want u sub theta aligned with e sub z. So to do that, uh, you know, recall we already did our, our negative 2 rotation by 90 minus phi. So ER is pointed in this direction. This is ER. This is now EZ. And then E sub theta is still into the page. So to align E sub Z with U sub theta, we'll have to do a negative 1 rotation by 90. And that would swing it down, and our bases would be aligned at that point. So let's see if that's, <laughs> that's what I had written down here. Yep. So first we did a 3 rotation by theta. And then we did a 2 rotation by negative 90 minus theta. Right? It was a negative 2 rotation. And then we did a negative 1 rotation by 90. Or 1 rotation by negative 90. It's the same thing. And if you didn't follow those rotations, I did a video kind of talking through how to visualize... Uh, these rotations, and I recommend you go check that one out. So this is where we were. This is where we're going. This was our first rotation. It was a three rotation by theta. This was our second rotation. It was a two rotation by negative quantity 90 minus theta. And then this was our third rotation. It was a one rotation by negative 90. And if we do the multiplication for this, I'm not going to go through it, but I encourage you to do it on your own, we'll end up with this. This is our relationship between our inertial frame, our green frame, to um, our spherical basis. And if we compare this to Wikipedia again, 
And I just want to make note that theta, uh, Wikipedia's theta is r phi, and Wikipedia's phi is r theta. Maybe I should have started out like that, but this is the notation that I'm comfortable with and know. Um, so I'm going to stick with it. So let's take a look. Uh, r is equal to sine theta cosine phi in the ex. Well, that's what we got, sine phi cosine theta. Remember, the angles are switched in the ex. Now, the next one, sine theta sine phi in the y. Sine phi sine theta in the ey. And then finally, cosine theta z. Cosine phi z. That's what we got. Let's look at the next one, the theta direction. Cosine theta cosine phi in the x. Cosine phi cosine theta in the x. And then cosine phi cosine theta in the y. Cosine phi cosine theta in the y. Negative sine phi in the ez negative sine phi in the EZ. Last one, the u sub theta direction. So negative sine theta in the EX, negative sine phi in the X, those match. Cosine theta in the EY, cosine phi in the Y, zero EZ. There's no Z component here. So we did it. We did it. We did our spherical, Cartesian, cylindrical. We converted between them. Um, and in conclusion, I just want to say, like, I don't really think about Cartesian cylindrical spherical coordinates that much. I just think of, one, setting up my reference frames properly. That's very important. Two, I create my position vectors from an inertial point. And then three, I just use my DCMs to relate my reference frames. And we're going to do examples of this. Um, but this is the process I go through for the kinematics, um, finding our position vectors, velocities, and accelerations. Uh, so that's it. See you in the next one.